and start video. Meeting is now, oh yeah, meeting is now streamlining on YouTube, Wally. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm gonna put this on speaker view for a second so that people can kind of get organized as they join us in Zoom for worship. And I'm realizing I need to kind of adjust my myself so that I've got things centered behind me and ready to go. So we managed to live stream to YouTube this morning. Uh, last week when we live streamed to Facebook, quite a few people had trouble seeing the video and had various problems. So I thought, well, I'll try live streaming to YouTube this morning and what do you know, it worked. <laughs> so that's really exciting. Um, I am going to um, take about um, a few minutes just as we gather here in the Zoom room to kind of say hi to people. I know we don't normally do this uh, as we are starting for worship, but I thought, why not give it a try? So I'm going to invite you to uh, start your videos for a second since I've already got you uh, Set, I've got a set up on YouTube, so hopefully that won't change anything. And we're about five minutes away from when worship starts, so we're just going to kind of gather together and say hi to one another. So I'm going to... Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. So everybody, this is uh, John Neff, if you haven't met him before. He's our uh, congregational support at the Western Ontario Waterways region. And just for the Western Ontario Waterways region, a lot of the staff at Western Ontario Waterways also have a couple other regions 
under their purview, but John is just ours. Right, John? Yes, that's true. <laughs> so, oh, that's what you did with that. I like that, John. Do you yep. see that everybody that John has of the picture of Centennial as his background? Good thinking. Okay, so just gonna th throw up the gallery view here. So um, people will be able to see you on on YouTube, and we're just gonna take a minute as we gather to kind of say hello and good morning. I've unmuted, I think, everybody who's joined so far. So if you wanna say hi, that would be great. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Good morning, Joan. Hi, Joan. Hi, Shirley. Oh, how are you feeling, Joan? Much better, thank you. Oh, yay. Good. Yeah, that's very good. Yes. Uh, I guess nobody wants to go to the hospital right now, but when you need to, it's a good thing you can. And your stay was short, so that was good. Yes. Norm, I see Norm's there too. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to move in a bit. <laughs> yeah. So. Morning, Jennifer. Oh, hi. Perfect. How's well, he's got his own. He's got his own thing back there. But he wanted to say hi. Yeah. How's it working on YouTube? Well, it's working good this morning. Good. It's a little bit behind on YouTube, so you guys will be out of sync. <laughs> but that's really great. Yes. Yeah. I I had no trouble at all when I went to stream live to YouTube. Um, John, when I first started doing this. The first Sunday I went live to Facebook, slick, so easy, so fast, yep. right, right from the Zoom room. And then yes. the second Sunday, couldn't get on YouTube, couldn't get really? on Facebook. I tried so many times. The third Sunday, also could not get on, could not get on, no matter what I tried. And I wonder so, sometimes if it's a bandwidth issue where too many people are trying to connect all at once. Yes. Like globally, yeah. through things like Zoom and YouTube. Yeah, I said church broke the internet. <laughs> Nobody would have believed it possible. <laughs> so just as we gather, I'm inviting people to be unmuted and chat and talk. And I think while I, when I do the announcements, I'll kind of keep people up like this. And then if uh, during that time of um, joys and concerns, we can speak them out loud, those of us who are here in the Zoom room. And if you are joining us on YouTube, then please feel free, if you can, to comment in the chat on YouTube. I don't know if it'll be enabled because I've had trouble figuring out how to do that. Um, I like to be as forthright as possible. And because part of our services every week have an element where it's specifically for kids, then I, I don't like to tell YouTube that it was just made for adults because it wasn't. And so when you make things for kids, they don't let you comment on it. So that's kind of what I've been doing and why I've had trouble. So if you are on YouTube and you wanna comment, but you can't make comments on YouTube, I invite you to uh, go over to our Facebook page and comment there while you watch on YouTube. <laughs> That's a bit of a run around, but, uh, but other than that, you could also join us in the Zoom room if that works easier for you. Okay, so Don and Bernie, morning, what was that? I was saying that I can see Don and Bernice, and I wondered if I could hear them today. There's John, There's John Squire. There's John Squire. There he is. So we've got a few more people joining in. So if you're on Zoom and you want to see everybody who's here at the same time, I can tell some of you are already doing that. There is a gallery view. And if you're on a laptop or a desktop, it's up in the top right hand corner. And you can switch it from speaker view to gallery view. So uh, it's the gallery button for if you're on something else looks like just a bunch of squares 
I think it's a grid of nine squares. So if you click on that, you can see it. And if you're on an iPad, uh, I think you can do that on an iPad. On an iPhone, you have to like swipe it to get a gallery view and you can only see like four people at a time. So to see everyone, you have to just keep swiping and swiping and swiping. So, but if you're on a desktop or a laptop, like I think I can get up to 30 people on one screen. So it's kind of exciting. All right, and uh, yes, I, I'm going to ask you to start your video, but if you can't, because um, you are not presentable, <laughs> or you feel like you're not, don't worry I'm about not. it, you can just ignore me. Wally, there's Elaine and Roy. Oh, Dawn, you raised your hand. Good job. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Elaine. <laughs> I'm just talking, aren't you, then? That sounds funny. I'm thinking that John definitely cannot hear us anymore. Okay. All right. So uh, it's, it's past time to start worship. So, so as more people continue to gather, for just a second, I'm going to uh, mute everybody and I'm going to share some of the announcements that usually we have running before, but we were kind of gathering in here. You've got to sit so up. that is my plan. I'm gonna um, take it down. Okay, there we go. I just I'm just uh, muting all, and I think you could still unmute yourself if you wanted to. And I'm gonna share my screen and share the announcements so that we can kind of go through them together. So as you already know. Today is uh, the wonderful covenanting service with the Western Ontario Waterways Region, uh, Regional Council. And I'm sorry, I'm getting organized here because I printed off a few bulletins for my family to um, participate and they're still getting them organized for themselves. All right, so I'm um, going to run this through to the beginning of our announcements. So when we gather uh, in worship together, uh, we begin our worship time. Uh, we have been, well, we've been online anyway. Every week before this, we have it printed in the bulletin. Um, that we acknowledge the land that we are standing upon. And we acknowledge that there were centuries where people were uh, living on this land before we ever got here and they cared for it and loved it and we give thanks for that. And we acknowledge our desire to be in relationship with those who uh, were the original people on this land. And I invite you from wherever you are watching on YouTube to think about the traditional territory that you are upon and who might have been uh, the original uh, dwellers on that land. So here um, in Stainer and Wasega Beach and Collingwood for the most part, the original, this was the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, the Anishinaabe and the Wendat peoples. And so we like to um, think about all the different places uh, around the country that are gathering to worship with us this morning. We have some people uh, in Saskatchewan who are worshiping with us and that for the most part is Treaty 4 territory. And there are um, an amazing number of different treaties and amazing numbers of different people who were the original dwellers of this land. And uh, as we gather to worship, we acknowledge their care of the land and we express our desire to be in relationship with them and to honor their care of the land as we live on the land with respect. And so as we begin our worship, we think of that. So a uh, little update. Uh, every week this has gone in our bulletin about the coronavirus and so um, 
we are continuing to live stream and this time we got to YouTube, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, you can see I'm in my kitchen at home because we are trying to stay home as much as possible and to sort of model that even still. But I'm sure you've heard that there will be some relaxation of the restrictions in the coming uh, week. So uh, if you are um, at home, and you are watching on YouTube and you would like to join us in the Zoom room, I'm gonna give you some information now, okay? So we are on Zoom and we are at the ID number for your room. If you have a pen and pencil, that would be great. And if you could type it in there, Alindra, is 939-3714. Six 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 three. That's the ID of our Zoom room. Um, and there's a password, uh, which I can't get to right now. <laughs> uh, and I know people are asking about that who don't get the emails that I share with everyone in the church. So if anybody can share in the chat, um, what the password is for our, for our Zoom room, that would be great. And I can see that um, there are people who can do the chat, so maybe you know what that is. I should have written it down on a piece of paper where I had it handy right now. So uh, I didn't, I'm sorry about that. And getting the information from in here is always tricky. Okay, so. You can try just the ID, 939-3714-6663. Um, yeah, so. I'm just gonna uh, talk a little bit about uh, things that are going on in the church. So we had messy Sunday school this week. We had book sharing and we had a virtual choir. It was pretty exciting. And I wanna thank everyone who took part in those things. And um, it was great. This week, we're hoping to have some more Sunday school. So all you Sunday school out there, uh, keep that in mind. We, uh, oh great, I've got a password here. 001265, 001265. Okay, yeah. So hopefully this week, last week, we made uh, something in messy Sunday school for the covenanting service. And then at home, we made something else for the, for the covenanting service. So this week we wanna make that something else with everybody. And I'm gonna to try to send out the notice about this messy Sunday school um, more in advance than the last time, which was late Monday night for a messy Sunday school that happened on Tuesday morning. So this week, mark your calendar. We're hoping to have messy Sunday school on Wednesday. And if you are part of our Sunday school and you want to pick what time on Wednesday we meet together, uh, we're thinking the morning uh, and you can kind of guess, uh, you can kind of set the time. So just let me know what you want to do. Another thing that I've been doing while we have been apart is trying to keep <laughs> our, our confirmation class going. And a couple of things that we're working on right now is, um, Uh, we are working on sharing a song that is uh, especially meaningful for us right now and saying why and rewriting our psalm for today, which is the 23rd psalm, in our own words. So if you want to share your favorite songs, the confirmation class would love to hear them. Maybe it will inspire them. And if you want to rewrite the 23rd Psalm in your own words in language for today or with images from today that have meaning in your life, by all means, I invite you to, to do that and to send it to me 
at Jennifer at UC Stainer, and we're going to share it with the Sunday School, or with the confirmation class. I will share anything I get, and, uh, and who knows, it might get shared to Facebook. We like to share some songs sometimes, so if you have some favorite songs we could share, that would be awesome. So that's what's happening there. And uh, Camping Sunday, I shared uh, Creamore New Lowell's Camping Sunday from last Sunday uh, to our Facebook page. So if you didn't see that, you want to check it out. It's super fun. And it inspired me to definitely want to do a Camping Sunday. If you have any ideas for how we might do a Camping Sunday uh, during this time, please let me know. I would love to hear them. Uh, I've heard from a couple people who want to be involved, so that would be great. I'm really hoping we can do something fun for Camping Sunday. All right, so uh, that's going to come up later in the service. I want to thank everybody for the donations to the food bank. They're still looking for uh, lots of items, so if you can donate to the food bank at this time, I invite you to do so. And this week, we think especially of the new Hamburg pastoral charge, which is part of our um, Western Ontario waterways region. Okay, so those are some of our announcements for today. Uh, I can see there are lots of people gathered together, which is excellent. So as we uh, begin our worship together, I am going to unmute um, everybody again because I'm going to take a moment now to invite people to share any uh, joys or concerns as they gather with us today or any other announcements you would like to make sure that we know about as we gather. Here's your chance. Anybody gathering here today have a birthday? Ooh, it looks like proper room. Yes. <laughs> One person called mom. I'm um, How about any concerns? You can also write them in the chat if you like. June's birthday was on Thursday. When our virtual choir uh, met, we called her up and sang her happy birthday. So maybe we won't do it again this morning. But I'm hoping, uh, Neela, we're going to print out some music and see if we can get the mm -hmm. ukulele going to sing happy birthday uh, as we gather if anybody has Thanks a birthday. I also heard um, this week that Dr. Bill Ives celebrated his 93rd birthday. Okay. And I know of a few other people who have birthdays in late April. So we think about all of them and we celebrate with them, even when they can't uh, get a big birthday party going. Uh, a birthday is a special day. So mm -hmm. I hope that if you know somebody whose birthday it is, you gave them a call and said happy birthday or sent them a happy birthday message on Facebook. Oh, there's there's all stars. Yeah. Yeah. So um, can some concerns that I know about and that I want to name now and that we'll think about as we do our mm -hmm. prayers of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still mm -hmm. um, yeah. keeping uh, Jim B. Croft and Marilyn uh, Beecroft and Alice Gratoli uh, in our prayers because they're helping their brother who's really central yeah. in our prayers. Uh, Jim and Alice's brother Dave is uh, suffering from cancer and some other health concerns and uh -huh. all three of them right now have gone to be to be with there to help support Dave as he does treatments and um, needs just a little bit of more support. So we think of that today. Crazy. And um, I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago uh, when we worshiped together, maybe only a couple weeks ago, um, there, I had some people from Saskatchewan in the Zoom room. And um, one of them, my friend Carla Richards, went for surgery this week and they found cancer. Um, and so she had a lot uh, removed and doesn't know yet what the what the prognosis is, the pathology report isn't back, and she'll have to go for treatment. So I'm thinking about her uh, and her mom, Anne, this morning as we gather together and we worship and pray. Are there any other concerns that you want to name today as we gather for worship? I know there are so many in our hearts and minds and as we gather each week and we name these as we start our worship, I always follow this time by lighting the Christ candle. And I light this candle 
as a reminder of God's love and the light of Christ that shines even in the darkest times of our lives. And so as we gather and we light this candle, and as we gather each week and we all those places in our worship that could use a little light. So is that all the people tuned in? No, I don't think so. little sneak preview of one of our joys for this morning um, and that is yeah. our covenanting service that we're going to be celebrating together just after our time for the young and the young at heart will you join me in the call to worship on this Sunday, we come together in this virtual space and are united by our faith and our courage to proclaim the good news. We come to, we celebrate, come to celebrate with family, with family and, and friends and strangers, and strangers from near and far, and far proclaiming, proclaiming loudly, loudly that all, all are welcome. Are welcome. We come to witness to the gospel of love, which connects us in community in ways that constantly surprise us and bring us joy. And so, so we and friends, and friends and strangers, strangers from near and far, and proclaiming, proclaiming loudly, loudly that all that are, are welcome. welcome. Mm, what we're saying? Where is that? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Advance the slide too soon. <laughs> uh, we come to witness to the gospel of love that connects us in community in ways that constantly surprise us. So, we come worshiping, singing, and praying this day. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> So don't worry. All right, Greta, um, you have YouTube playing as well, and we can hear the sound from it. So if you could turn off the YouTube part of this and just be in the Zoom room, that would be great. That would help. YouTube gives the echo. So if anybody else has YouTube playing in the background, just shut that off. And then we'll be set to do this back and forth, I think. That happened to me when I first live streamed to YouTube as well. Okay. So just, we're, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm playing around. So when we do something that's in unison, um, there's going to be an echo because there's a bit of a delay between when I say it and when you say it. So anything yep. that's in unison, um, except for the part of our covenanting, I'm going to mute everybody, but you still say it at home. And then when it is uh, responsive, I'm going to unmute everybody. So we're, yeah, we're going to try that anyway and see, <laughs> see how it goes. So let us join in our opening prayer. Holy One, we bring our undivided selves to worship this day. We bring our certainty and our doubts. We bring our despair and our hope. We bring our fear and our assurance. We bring our focus and our distractedness. We bring our total selves into this online community that we may worship you with all that we are and that gathered this way, we might become one body, united in Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So I am going to ask for your uh, understanding and patience, all you people who are watching on YouTube right now, and all of you who are with me in the Zoom room, um, I, wa I want to try that again. <laughs> so um, what I want to do is I would love it if you would uh, entertain me. And I'm going to go back to the call to worship. And we're going to try that responsibly again, now that we've got our sound issues organized. And we're just going to kind of do a restart on those first couple of things. Okay. On this Sunday, we come together in this virtual space and are united by our faith and our courage to proclaim the good news. We, we come, come to, to celebrate with family and friends and strangers from near and far, proclaiming the good news. Welcome. Thanks for the strong voice. We come to witness to the gospel of love, which connects us in community in ways that constantly surprise us and bring us joy. And so we're come worshiping, singing, worshiping, praying, praying this day. This day. Let us pray. Holy One, we bring our undivided selves to worship this day. We bring our certainty and our doubts. We bring our despair and our hope. We bring our fear and our assurance. We bring our focus and our distractedness. We bring our total selves into this online community that we may worship you with all that we are and that gathered this way, we might become one body united in Christ our Lord who taught us to pray together saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So our opening hymn is in Voices United. It's number 402, We Are One. Uh, just give me one second. Got to get get our musician up here. Okay. Here he comes. Is there an intro to this? The entire thing. Okay, so we listen through to it once, and then we'll sing. Oh. Change to change of plans. What is it? There's an intro and it's not the whole song. Okay, perfect. We are one as we come, as we come joyful to be here. 
In the praise on our lips is a sound that God is near. We are one as we sing, as we seek. As we meet together in this place, we are one as we share, as we share brokenness and fear in the touch of a hand. There's a sense that God is here. We are one as we care. As we heal, we are healed, and we share warmth in God's embrace as we pray together in this place. We are one as we hear, as we hear, heart and hand unite in the word we receive. There's a sense that God is the light. We are one as we leave, as we love, we are loved. And we seek justice in God's ways as we move together from this place. We come from many different places and with many different feelings as we gather together in worship. Let us join in our prayer of confession, bringing all that we are. God of hope and love, we come into this space of worship with so many different thoughts and emotions. Some of us have gathered hesitantly, unsure of how this way of worship works. Some of us have gathered fearfully, unsure if we really want to be seen online. Some of us have come doubtfully, unsure if this kind of worship can really feel like church. Yet here we are, your church, with all our hesitations, fears, and doubts, as we make our confession Help us to be open to your spirit, bringing us together. Amen. No matter what our hesitations, fears, or doubts, each of us is called into this place by God, the giver of life and conqueror of death. Here we can come as our truest selves and find welcome and mercy. We are God's people forgiven through Christ. Hallelujah. And so we sing. Halle, halle, halle.
Are there any young and young at heart here who'd like to join me at the front? Okay, not really. Um, but I will um, come back to here and I'm going to throw on speaker view here so that I can um, ask um, Alindra to share with us what she made this week. I don't know. Maybe maybe all of you have seen one of these before, but um, I put out a plea saying, hey, anybody have a kaleidoscope? And nobody did. Do you know what this is? Can you see that it's a kaleidoscope? Has anybody ever owned one of these? Like I had a kaleidoscope when I was a kid and I used it all the time. I, I loved it. And I, I think you could probably get them pretty cheap at the dollar store or someplace, but we didn't want to go shopping or anything like that. And nobody came forward with the kaleidoscope. So uh, Alindra made one. Can you believe this? Look at this kaleidoscope. So, I mean, it was kind of interesting. We tried a few different ways to make it. Um, but really, it's just when you take it apart, it's just a, a toilet paper roll. Paper towel roll, this one is. Yeah, Alindra's correcting me. With with a hole cut in one end here. And then sliding inside that um, paper towel roll is a toilet paper roll. And inside the toilet paper roll is a triangle. And inside that triangle, it's a long stretch. It's mirrors. And then at the end, I think I can lift this up. At the end of that, there are just random little pieces of paper, uh, pieces of things, broken things. And there's like, a, if I don't know if you can see this, I'm, I'm destroying the mystery before I show you the cool part, but there's a paper clip and a button and a bead and a jewel and uh, a broken piece of paper, the mirror bit. Uh, just, yeah, the broken piece of the CD that we used to create the mirror in the middle. And they they go in there, just these little bits of don't seem like much, not all that important items. And then when you look through the middle, I'm going to try to do this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this should work really great, but it's just uh, zooming in and making sure I get the camera in the right spot. And before you know it, look what you can see in the middle of that kaleidoscope. And when you turn the kaleidoscope, whoa, I went up. The patterns change and more beautiful images can be seen. Woo, that was a pretty one. And you just never know where it's going to end up. And each time you turn, you get like a different mix of those items in there. And they're beautiful in different ways. So the, what the reason I wanted to show this is because it reminds me of how things work in the church and how we are. Sometimes people think, oh, what do I have to offer? What's so great about me? I'm just this or that, or I don't have anything all that great. And they think, mm, maybe there isn't a place for me there. But the thing is, in the church, there's a place for everybody. And with God, you never know how what you have to offer, no matter how small or broken and how, or weird looking, uh, how it's going to be transformed by God's spirit and by the other people that are there. And so it's a good reminder that God can transform everyone and everything into just what they're supposed to be, into beauty and into light and into joy and as we are celebrating the covenanting today with the Western Ontario water region, way regions, I thought this was especially neat because 
we are a bunch of different people from different places. Uh, but when we get together and we work together in different ways, there's different committees and different commissions. And in the church, we have a board and we have a worship committee. And the same people can be on different committees. But when they get together with the different combinations of people on the next committee, different things happen and they do different work. And amazing things happen when we can work together and reorganize ourselves in different ways and the light of God, uh, the light of Christ shines upon us and the Holy Spirit blows through us. And the next thing you know, we are a beautiful kaleidoscope church and we can make beautiful things happen in the world. And so I just thought that was so neat. We just happen to have this shiny green paper. There are so many different ways we can, you can, things you can use at home to make a kaleidoscope that this week, Sunday school, when we get together, we're going to try to have everyone be able to make a kaleidoscope to have at home to remind you that you can transform through God's love and be beautiful, uh, more beautiful when we work together with all the other different bits that are transforming through God's love. So I know everybody's pretty awesome all on their own, but just add a little bit and what do you know? Amazing, right? So our song for uh, following this time is one of my favorites about wonder. And so just before we sing together, teach me God to wonder, uh, let us pray. Loving God, thank you for all of the different people in our church who work together in your light and make beautiful things happen and beautiful designs appear. Encourage us all as we work in your church to be transformed by your love. Amen. Okay, so if you would join me in singing, um, it's hymn number 299 in Voices United. Teach me God to wonder. join in our service of covenanting. I'm so thankful to John Neff, who is here with us from the region, and to uh, those uh, members of our congregation who are going to be taking part in this service of covenanting. 
Uh, so uh, Donna Nadalny, uh, Greta Horton, um, Alindra and Neela Irving, John and myself are going to be the principal speakers. And as, as we go through this uh, service of covenanting, I invite them to um, unmute themselves and join in. And when we get to the point where we will join together as an entire congregation to uh, speak the words of covenant, I will unmute everyone so that we can take part in that. As echoey and goofy as it will sound, <laughs> it will reflect our unity. <laughs> Uh, even while it's being just disjointed. It's a wonder how God works. And so uh, the communities of faith and the regional council of the Western Ontario waterways share ministry in mutual respect as part of the United Church of Canada. Together, we celebrate God's presence, seek justice, <clears throat> and love and serve others. A covenantal relationship intentionally and willingly entered into between a community of faith and the regional council is an important symbol of our commitment to one another. Covenant is a term with deep roots in the Christian tradition. In scripture, it's frequently used to describe a relationship. For example, the covenant at Sinai, God joined uh, join God and the people together in an expression of gratitude and mutual commitment. With the Ten Commandments serving as the foundation for their relationship with God and one another. In Jesus, we are given a new covenant to love one another as we are loved by Christ. And in our personal relationships, marriage is a covenant that draws two people together in a partnership based on love mutual respect, and promises to care for one another. This covenant between Centennial United Church in Stainer and Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council is an expression of our gratitude and commitment to one another. Promises to share the ministry entrusted to us as members of the United Church of Canada and our gratitude for the gifts we have been given by God for this work. Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council covenants to fulfill the responsibilities of a regional council as outlined in the manual of the United Church of Canada and its accompanying handbooks with a vision toward connecting, supporting, and transforming. In so doing, the regional council will make decisions concerning communities of faith with and not for the community of faith. We will offer staff resources to assist communities of faith in strengthening their understanding of themselves and to equip them to be partners in God's mission. And we commit to supporting the community of faith through prayer and encouragement. Centennial United Church, Stainer, covenants to fulfill the responsibilities of a community of faith as outlined in the Manual of the United Church of Canada and its accompanying handbooks and will. And will respect and follow the policies set out by the region participate in the work of Western Ontario Waterways Region by electing representatives to the region, share information about the region with their community, support the region through prayer and engagement in regional ministries. Just as the bread and cup or a wedding ring our familiar symbols of covenant, our relationship is also represented with tangible symbols of our promises to one another. The following symbols represent the spirit with which the regional council, council enters this covenantal relationship and represent our desire to connect 
and support and transform the three values that we hold dear for our regional council. So we offer this chain symbolizing our connection, how we are linked together. We offer this walking stick. I see my virtual background is interfering there a little bit. Let me cancel that for a moment. We offer this walking stick showing that we walk with each other. And we light this candle the flame representing the ability to imagine possibilities through the spirit. Thank you, John. Centennial United Church Stainer names these symbols that represent the spirit with which we enter this covenantal relationship and our desire to be connected, supported, and transformed. Okay, so just for one second, um, uh, Neil is coming and she's got some balloons she's gonna share. Uh, but I also uh, invited people to blow up balloons if they happen to have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hold them up if they happen to have them. So. Neil is going to come over here on my side of the camera so she, you can see I've got a balloon here. She's going to say the words, but I'm just going to stop the share for a second so that we can um, have a gallery view and see if anybody else has balloons that they're sharing. Here we go. Okay, come on in. We offer these balloons to show how we will. Work together as joint workers. That's close enough. Oh, look, there are some balloons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Sandra. Look at <laughs> she's got <laughs> she's got a glove <laughs> blown up. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Neela. Okay, and then we offer this kaleidoscope representing the desire to look at the future in new and colorful ways. And we offer this heart, representing the love of God, our love for the community and each other, and our love for this united church of ours, a love that transcends our community dinners and coffee together, gatherings in person and online, distance and time, a love that never ends together or apart. Okay, now I'm going to uh, unmute everybody as we join in this mm -hmm. part of the covenant mm -hmm. service. We are committed to working together in positive ways. Commit to a code of conduct that is uplifting and supportive and all responsibility to stand against bullying and harassment. We recognize, we recognize that there may be times, there may be times through misunderstanding, 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 misun
to the covenant, covenant to each moment to match mind closer. We were tempted to create distance, distance. distance. Seeking, ways. seeking ways, our relationship, restore our relationship, seeing whatever resources might help. So we reach agreement on the way forward. forward. Let us pray. God of relationship, we give thanks for the opportunities to work together as we live out our faith, connecting, supporting, and transforming one another and all that is around us. Guide us as we seek to serve our communities and the world, walking in love and faith, Keep us mindful of all that dwells on this earth and our responsibility to caring for it. We pray this in the name of the one who showed us by example. Amen. And this is the Certificate of Covenant that we are going to receive a real copy of uh, that, that uh, John sent so that I could include it in this slideshow and we give thanks for this covenant and for this time together. Okay, so now we're gonna continue our worship with our scripture readings. And our first scripture reading um, for this morning is the 23rd Psalm. Will you join with me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our... Um, second scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 2. It's verses uh, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. May God bless these readings to our memory and to our understanding. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I sat down to prepare for this Sunday, this service of covenanting, this sermon, I was amazed to find this scripture passage as part of the lectionary for the fourth Sunday in Easter, this passage from Acts about the early Christian church, how they had all things in common and how they would sell their possessions and goods and then distribute the money to all as any had need. It seemed to me so fitting that on this day when we enter into covenant between Centennial United Church 
and the new Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council, where we promise to share what we have and are with one another to strengthen and support each other to better fulfill our separate ministries that we should read about the way the early church did just this same kind of sharing. In the early church, as believers began to come together and hear the story of the good news, the apostles were proclaiming about Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit spread. We are told that they would bring things together and share things communally. People learned that it didn't matter if you were rich or poor in this new community and that those who didn't have someone who, to take care of them whether they were widows or orphans or outcasts, they would be taken care of there. I think that in normal times, although this type of community is something we strive for in the church and we hold up as an ideal, it's not something we achieve easily. And if we're being honest, despite what the early church may have done, we aren't all sold on this concept of what some might call socialism, right? And yet, these are not normal times. And suddenly, as we look around, everywhere we look around, way out beyond the doors of the church, we see people who have an abundance sharing freely with those who are in need couple of examples. Artists of all shapes and sizes are sharing their talents to bring joy and happiness to those who are feeling depressed and alone. Thursday night, I was able to listen to a couple of songs by Carrie Newcomer from her home in Indiana. And Friday night, an entire concert live streamed to Facebook from the Regina living room of Jeffrey Straker one of my favorite Canadian piano players and singer-songwriters. Love yourself some Andrew Lloyd Webber? No problem. You can watch The Show Must Go On on YouTube every weekend. Not to mention the CTV Stronger Together special featuring artists like Brian Adams, Justin Bieber, and Jan Arden, to name a few, saluting frontline workers combating COVID-19 that raised over 8 million for food banks so far across the country. And they ate with glad and generous hearts. Need some exercise? Instructors of all shapes and sizes are sharing their skills. You can find free online classes in yoga, Zumba, meditation, martial arts, spin cycling, ballet, ballroom dancing, you name it, you can probably find it. Looking for some education? If you received our Easter newsletter, you saw all the amazing online museum and art gallery, zoo and historic site tours. The Ontario Smart Serve course, religious resources and more being shared for free during this time. Just yesterday, a group of United Church ministers did a karaoke and posted it to YouTube. Try to find that one because it's pretty funny. I'm not sure if that would qualify as sharing talents, but it definitely shared some joy and laughter as they sang and danced. Whether it's sharing messages on sidewalks, pictures on windows, groceries on doorsteps, technological help over the phone, a check in the mailbox, whatever we can to help those in need, we are praising God and becoming one in a community made all the more miraculous as it happens outside of our communal doors. And we are reminded of what the early church knew all along, that we really don't need a church to be the church at all. 
As we honor this covenant in this time, we celebrate this new realization of a wider community that reaches far beyond the doors of any church and stretches into hearts and homes all around the world. We celebrate all that we have to give and all that we have been given. We celebrate the goodwill that exists among people here and now. We celebrate all that we have in common. We celebrate that it is just as we sing together in more voices, number 154, deep in our hearts. Sorry, I'm going to share my screen so that we can sing this together to close my time of reflection. And I give thanks to everyone who joined my virtual choir for this. Um, deep in our hearts, there is a common vision, a common song. It knows no boundaries. We have people on our vir in our virtual choir from all across the country recording in all different ways. And as we sing together, we give thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. Just wanted to share with you for a minute before I share the minute permission. 
this image uh, that was posted on the United Church of Canada Facebook page. They announced a global response to the increasing needs of communities in the global south face that they faced during COVID-19 and invites us to please support uh, Mission and Service and their, their, our partners. I know that for sure since this started, uh, I've been asking as followers of Jesus, what can we do? What can I do? Uh, people of the United Church have asked how they can support our church as we reach out to partners and the vulnerable communities they work with during this time of pandemic. The United Church is now accepting donations to help support mission and service partners in the Global South as they work to meet the needs of these communities in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. There is more information about this appeal on the United Church of Canada website at COVID-19 Global Response. The United Church has been in close touch with mission and service partners since COVID-19 swept across the globe. ACT Alliance, ACT, a global alliance of churches and church-related organizations with coordinates, which coordinates crisis response among its members, is gathering global resources to support this COVID-19 response. The United Church has already made an initial contribution to ACT. Many of the communities mission and service partners work with are already living with hunger, lack of access to water, crowded living conditions, and limited health care. COVID-19 has further exacerbated these heartbreaking realities. The United Church is working faithfully with partners to address immediate needs for food and supplies to help keep communities safe during the pandemic. In light of this, uh, the monies that we collected over Lent for um, our Lenten calendars, putting coin after coin after coin in, we raised over $200 and we are going to be able to name that as part of this um, response through the United Church of Canada. So I give thanks for all of you who were able to donate that way and for all of the donations that continue to come in to support not only our local church, but our community and our world. Uh, I invite you at this time to think about um, the many different ways that we share with our world. And remember how we are all part of the community of God's love. Our gifts, whether big or small, flashy or loud, quiet or plain, have immense value in God's eyes. And so I invite you to think about the gifts you offer this week in this time of offering, the seeds of love that you sow, the ways you nurture love into growth. We're going to sing um, our offering hymn, What Makes Love Grow. Uh, and I'm uh, wondering if, if you wanted to put in the chat some of the things that you have been doing, those offerings that you have been giving that are seeds of love. And I think that would be really neat to read. I know here we went to the Stainer Care Center and drew some flowers on their window, although I'm sure the rain has washed them off. We'll have to go and replace them. And I, as we went on a walk yesterday, I saw lots of places that had um, different pictures and, and signs in their windows that brought joy to my heart. So all those little things can make such a big difference.
All right, have we got music coming for our last hymn and our offertory hymn? Not quite sure, walked away from my room. Um, but I think it's coming back. We're going to sing our sing together as we think of all our offerings. Uh, what makes love grow? Let us pray. Compassionate one, you call us to participate in the radical act of sharing that is happening all around us. With glad and generous hearts, we respond and rejoice as we see the love Jesus desired for all your creation growing into fullness all around us. Amen. Okay. So for our prayers of the people today, um, I think I'm going to need your help, Neil, because I'd like you to kind of just hold this up here. So you can see I have tied together um, three different colors of threads and our yarn. <laughs> and the white represents Thanksgivings. The pink represents individual local concerns and individual concerns and the green represents petitions for our world and our prayers of the people I invite you to pray um, at home as well and if you want to try this sometimes uh, sometime at home just get a few pieces of yarn different colors and as you pray um, you braid and as you um, put one over the other, uh, you think specifically of the things associated with that colored yarn. So as I begin to pray, I give thanks for covenant promises. We pray that we at Centennial United Church and the Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council might keep the promises that we made this day and that the United Church of ours might remain strong and vital sharing love in the world. We give thanks for our mission and service and all the good work accomplished through it. May it continue to help the most vulnerable in our societies and communities in Canada and seek to affect change throughout the world. We give thanks for those who work tirelessly to share love. We pray for those we know on the front lines of this global pandemic. We give thanks for the grocery store workers and pray for their safety, along with all those in essential services everywhere. With thanksgiving and in concern, we name Tori, Susan, Glenn, Dan, Andy, and their counterparts around the world 
whose names we don't know. We give thanks for the signs of spring. And we name our concern for the pollution we see on our walks, the litter, and the pollution around our world. We give thanks the ways that this pandemic has freed the world from pollution. We give thanks for all those in healthcare here and around the world. We give thanks for all the support systems, for the people whom we know and around the world who need extra care right now. We name Carla, and the Bee Cross, and those in the Global South. We name those involved in the crash of the helicopter and their families those who are still grieving in Nova Scotia and in other places around the world touched by natural disaster at this time. As I continue to braid, I invite you to name your thanksgivings, to lift up those who are in your hearts known to you who need our prayers and to consider those concerns of a global nature that are on your heart. Source of all, may these and the prayers of our individual hearts be held together as a common offering of love, shared by each and distributed generously as there is need. These and all our prayers are braided together by your love. Amen. Let us join together now in our closing hymn, In Loving Partnership We Come. And even though it's going to sound like a uh, wild uh, cacophony, is that how you say that word? I'm going to invite you to unmute yourselves as you join me in singing. <laughs> And then I'm hopeful that you'll still be able to see the words if I share a bit of a gallery view here. In loving partnership, we come. Is there an intro to this, Colin? Yeah, okay, good. Now the key is uh, when singing like this <laughs> in wild joyous noise, make a joyful noise, um, just keep on singing with me, even if you hear uh, someone else echoing a little bit behind you or ahead of you, uh, just see if you can. <laughs> good luck, everybody. <laughs> I'm 
good luck everybody watching on YouTube too. Okay. Ready, Colin? Wait. 603 in loving partnership we come if you have a more voice our uh, voices united at all feel free to to find the words there way in here because they're they don't need it, it's on the screen Colin's just finding it on his computer ready brought together by the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit that are ours to share. Amen. Amen. And so let us sing amen together in joyful cacophony. <laughs> I don't know. with us this morning and uh, especially a uh, special thanks to John Neff for joining us for our worship today um, and for everyone who helped participate in the service of Covenant. Thank you. This was delightful.